The internet is making it more difficult to keep people's professional presence completely separate from their very personal activities. You might think what you're doing is private, but you might be wrong. New York City meteorologist Eric Adame was fired from his job after photos were leaked of him from an adult webcam site. He says he thought what he was doing was private. Now he says an anonymous person sent the photos to his mother and to his managers at work. Today, I had a chance to speak with Eric, who until recently worked for a local news station here, New York One. You are sharing this deeply personal crisis that you're yeah. in, and it is getting a huge amount of attention because it touches on privacy, how we share ourselves personally, socially, right? Yeah. At a, at, on the internet, which is largely unregulated, yeah. while content is getting more racier and more explicit, and we're all figuring out how do we reconcile that with expectations in the workplace, in our schools, with our families. And that's sort of what brings us to this conversation. So I want to start really with what happened yeah. to you. Your employer, just like NBC, has a morality clause. Mm -hmm. Do you accept that you were terminated uh, from your public facing job because nude images of you were shared? So I have. I apologize in my statement because I did feel that, you know, when looking back at uh, how this played out, that I, you know, some people probably felt offended. They had been hurt. Um, maybe even being a coworker of mine embarrassed them. But I don't think that what I did was wrong. I think in my statement, I also said that I, I unequivocally do not apologize for being sex positive and for being myself, being an openly gay man. Um, and as you were saying, the, the lines sometimes get blurred. You know, corporate America expects us to, to be under their control 24 7, seven days a week, and we have our personal lives too. Um, and what I did was something that really I intended to be private. I never spoke about it at work, obviously. Um, and, uh, and now it's not. And that was actually beyond my control, which is the other part of this, is someone took that and then sent it to my employer, um, which inevitably now makes it not private. Do you feel like you're a victim of revenge pornography? You know, looking at, uh, you know, and I've had uh, an attorney look at this as well, so I'm not a law expert to look at the, this particular case. Um, I do feel of a, like I'm a victim. Um, whether or not that's gonna be classified as revenge porn or not. Um, someone intentionally trying to hurt me and, and make me lose my career, that is obviously a point where I'm a victim. Uh, someone did this to me. And um, it's come out too that my mother was sent these images as well. So I'm not sure what the person's point was in doing this, um, but as you can imagine, how horrible of an experience that would be bringing your personal life and then sending it to your family. You know, you said perhaps maybe this offended a coworker. When you think back, right, as, as lewd or inappropriate as yeah. someone could think this is, 50 years ago, someone would lose their job if they were spotted at a gay bar. Yeah. Do we need to reevaluate what we think, what we say is acceptable when we look at these morality clauses? Absolutely. I mean, there's, I think there's a generational gap here in what's happening. I, I think that uh, there's a, a whole slew of, of people that are in this business and in many other businesses that this is an alien concept to them, that people are doing sexual things on the internet. And a lot of people are doing this all the time. In fact, during the pandemic, the New York City Health Department encouraged people to have virtual sex in order to be safe. From COVID. From COVID. And then now that could be used against you, what you did in those sessions, if because there is a lot of ability. It's very easy to take a screenshot or record what's happening. We're all very vulnerable and susceptible. This could happen to anyone. Uh, and that's essentially what happened to me. But there is definitely a generational gap between how it used to be and how it is now. And I think that there needs to be some change in how we look at this. So whether or not it's even considered immoral uh, in the first place. Did you think what you were doing was private? Because millions of people are on dating apps, social media sites, things more sexually explicit. 
Did you know what you were doing could make its way into the public? I, I also mentioned in my, in my statement, because, and I thought long and hard about this, that there was a lapse of judgment. Um, being a television person, a television personality, as you know, the rules can be different. We sort of live in a fishbowl where everyone looks at our actions and will judge them, honestly, quite differently than they judge others. Uh, in a way, we're not like the rest of humankind, you know, that people just treat us differently. So I think that I knew that in the back of my mind and wanted to be like a regular person. And so, yes, I wanted to be private, but I also knew that potentially this could not be private. Um, and kind of looked at that as a, a risk that probably would never happen to me, and it did. But when you think back, you're a grown man. What if you were a child, a teenager? Do we need more regulations or protections? Because technology has moved really quickly yeah. and regulation hasn't. Mm -hmm. And think about the position you found yourself in, the temptations, the room you were in. What if you were 15 or 16 and you'd lose your chance to go to college if I images think, like this could I come out? I think that there's a, a lot of risk there for our younger generations because it is so easy to grab a cell phone. It's so easy to get on any computer and, and do what I did at a, at a younger age. And I mean, there's there's two things here. They're they're at risk to predators that are out there and they're at risk at exploiting themselves and not knowing the consequences of that later in life, because this stuff stays out there forever. Do we know what privacy is in that? I'm guessing you would not have done this in the middle of Times Square. Right. But when you're just holding a phone, do you think that you're in a private space when, in fact, you're not protected at all? You're in the I public think, square times 10. Yeah, I think that when you're at home, as I was, in the privacy of my home, that you think you're private. And then when you're interacting with someone on the Internet, you think it's just you and that person. Uh, what happened to me uh, on this particular uh, thing that I was using, this adult website, it was captured without my permission and then shared without my permission. So that, uh, that took away my privacy. And that's been the hardest part of that, about all of this is the violation of my privacy. Okay, so your privacy was violated. You thought you were in a safe place, but you weren't. Right. On the other side of the coin, do you think that person who snapped that picture of you, who then shared it, are they being protected in the same way that Twitter trolls who come after us on any given day say the most horrible things, but if they saw you in real life, they wouldn't say a word. There's that a person who's attacked you, their, their anonymity is protected. Right. Yours is all out there. Yeah, I mean, there's absolutely, and I've seen this already on the internet, that, that, that people are protecting the person who did this, saying, well, if, if he was dumb enough to think that he was private, he deserves to be called out. We, we have definitely developed this culture where sometimes we protect the person who calls people out. This is not about that. This is not calling someone out on bad behavior. I didn't commit a crime here. I didn't do anything that is illegal in any way. What happened here is the other way around. Someone is doing something to me, as I said. I'm, and I'm you a want a court to force the website that you were on to publicly identify who that person is. Right. What do you want out of that? I want to find out who it is. There's a good chance that this person doesn't, it, I've been asked if I'm going to sue this person. If I do sue, if there is a, a lawsuit brought against them, it's not necessarily to take everything that they're worth. That's not the point here. The point is because I want to keep living my life. I loved doing what I did. Why do you think you can't get another job, right? So I, I yeah. get why you broke the morality clause, you're fired from New York One, but you're a really experienced meteorologist. Why do you think someone else won't hire you? I think, I think initially I thought there was a risk that employers maybe didn't want to take. If, if you hired me tomorrow, is someone going to send these images to you? How is that going to make people feel? And so I want to find out who this person is so that I can stop that from happening. But what I've learned in the last 24 hours is that people are on my side. The overwhelming support is more than I could have ever imagined. Cynthia Nixon even tweeted today telling me that she supports me and she doesn't understand why I was terminated in the first place when I'm a victim 
and that I should be reinstated. And that, that is ultimately, that would be a dream come true if I could be reinstated and that we could all learn from this. I think it would be a win-win situation for everyone. Well, you are forcing us to have a much needed conversation. I am sorry for what you're going through, but I thank you for sharing this time with me. Thank you for having me.